Hello everyone. Welcome to the series on oral habits. In this video, we will learn about tongue thrust swallowing habit, its classification, etiology, clinical features and management. According to Profit, tongue thrusting can be defined as placement of the tongue tip forward between the incisors during swallowing. Now, an important point to note here is that the word tongue thrust is actually a misnomer. It implies that tongue is forcefully thrust forward. However, studies have indicated that the tongue force is generally not more or even lower as compared to those who keep the tongue tip back during swallowing. Tongue thrusting can be classified into simple, lateral and complex tongue thrust. In simple tongue thrust, there is anterior open bite with normal teeth contact in posterior region. There is contraction of lips, mentalis muscle and mandibular elevators. Lateral tongue thrust presents posterior open bite with the tongue thrusting laterally. In complex tongue thrust, there is generalized open bite with absence of contraction of lips and muscles and no contact of teeth in occlusion. There can be several etiologic factors that may cause tongue thrusting. These include functional adaptation seen during mixed dentition phase or in adults with anterior spacing or anterior open bite, extraoral habits such as prolonged thumb sucking or finger sucking, significant airway obstruction with habitual mouth breathing, skeletal malocclusion such as class 2 div 1 cases, neurological disturbances such as hypotensive palate, moderate motor disability, disruption of sensory control, etc. And hereditary factors such as inherited hyperactivity of orbicularis oris. Now coming to the clinical features, extraorally there will be increase in anterior facial height and greater lip separation both at rest and in function with lack of compensatory lip activity during swallowing. Mandibular movements are more erratic and there is no correlation between the movements of tongue tip and the mandible. The patient will present with speech disorders such as lisping, sibilant distortions and problem in articulation. Intraorally, we will find a lower positioning of the tongue tip at rest, proclination of maxillary anteriors, generalized spacing between teeth and maxillary contraction. The mandibular arch will present retroclination or proclination of lower anterior teeth depending on the type of tongue thrust. And when we look at the inter-arch relationship, there will be anterior or posterior open bite depending on the type of tongue thrust. Now coming to the management part, tongue thrust often self-corrects by the age of 8 to 9 years once the permanent anterior teeth completely erupts. The self-correction occurs because of an improved muscular balance as the mature swallow is adopted. There are several treatment modalities depending on the underlying cause and associated problems. Starting with the myofunctional therapy, it involves conscious retraining of the tongue and strengthening of lip muscles through specially designed exercise programs and appliances. The steps include acquainting the patient with abnormal swallowing pattern and teaching and reinforcing the correct pattern of swallowing through various exercises such as sipping of water in front of mirror, sugarless mint or fruit drop exercise, orthodontic elastics and 4S exercise. Once the patient has trained the tongue and muscles to function properly, appliances such as pre-orthodontic trainer or Nance palatal arch can be used as a reminder to position the tongue correctly during swallowing. In appliance therapy, the objective is to retrain the tongue to a more posterior superior position by restraining anterior tongue movement. This can be achieved by both removable and fixed appliances. Removable appliances include vertical crib fence and oral screen, while in habit breaking appliances, crowns and bands are given on first permanent molars, they are connected with 0.4 inch SS U-shaped lingual bar and 3 to 4 V-shaped projections are soldered to the anterior part of the bar. Next is the speech therapy. It involves training correct positioning of the tongue. The child is asked to repeat simple multiplication tables of 6 
and to pronounce words beginning with s sound this method is not indicated before the age of 8 years coming to orthodontic treatment it is recommended when the anterior tongue placement is the result of adaptation to previously existing open bite and in cases of complex tongue thrusts follow it is usually more successful if initiated during the early mixed dentition stage or between 9 to 11 years and finally orthognathic surgery may sometimes be required to correct skeletal malformations along with myofunctional therapy the prognosis is guarded and relapse may occur if the tongue does not adapt to new skeletal environment at last some important pointers regarding tongue thrust in case of tongue thrust with malocclusion but no speech problem orthodontic treatment of malocclusion will usually eliminate the tongue thrust if tongue thrust is present with speech problems then speech therapy is indicated during elementary school years if there is no malocclusion speech or airway problems treatment is generally not recommended if the patient has both thumb sucking and tongue thrusting then thumb sucking should be treated first if mouth breathing postures are identified with clinical symptoms of airway blockage the dentist should refer the child to an otolaryngologist for appropriate medical consideration so that was all about tongue thrusting for more information on the topic you can download our app where we have uploaded detailed notes on oral habits in the upcoming video we will look into another oral habit till then if you found the video helpful and informative then do like the video share it with your friends and subscribe the channel for more such content